Hey everybody, this is Mike Bogg, Stryker System Sales Manager. We're excited to announce Stryker CAD CAM 2019 with numerous new features and architecture advancements. And we're happy to provide you, our customer, with this video that highlights just a few of these new features. But before we go any further, for those of you who don't want to listen to me, here's the timeline for each of the Stryker CAD CAM products in this video. So feel free to fast forward past me to get to the products that you're really interested in. Now for those of you who are still with me, I wanted to let you know that we're delivering Stryker CAD CAM 2019 to all of our Technology Assurance Program customers during the months of April and May, so keep an eye out for that. And if you're not a member of our Technology Assurance Program, we'd sure like to see you upgrade to the newest release. So please contact us so we can prepare an upgrade quotation for you. And finally, be aware that what you'll see in this video is just a small part of the 2019 advancements. For a more comprehensive list, we invite you to log in to the Stryker Information Center, select the Stryker What's New tab, and select 2019 from the top of the list. Thank you again for being a Stryker Systems customer. And thank you for taking the time to watch this 2019 feature video. And now, let's take a look at some of those features. Quick access to quality technical support continues to be a priority for us at Stryker Systems. Therefore, we have improved the Request Technical Support command and moved it to the priority position in our menu. With an active technical support agreement, you can open a support ticket and upload all pertinent data related to your support inquiry simply by filling in the subject and providing a description of your support issue. A new double-click feature provides quicker access to the most commonly used features. When you double-click on a supported object, such as a sheet, clamp, a tool hit, or a tool path, it accesses the most commonly used function related to that object. SS Profile 2019 expands on a recently introduced toolpath feature referred to as Edge Profiling. Where the standard SS Profile command creates a block of a tooled part, an Edge Profiled part keeps each feature of the part independent. We're just beginning to see some of the advantages of this new toolpath process. It allows us to offer advanced capability, such as a more comprehensive common edge cutting. You've likely seen it in a fiber laser demonstration, or perhaps you're already using this technology. Referred to as fly cutting, or sometimes flash cutting, it involves cutting shapes one edge at a time with no change in direction, thereby minimizing machine deceleration and acceleration. For the right application, this can provide significant improvement in cutting speeds. SS Profile 2019 fully supports fly cutting capability. One consideration of note, your SS Profile machine driver must be set up specifically to support fly cutting. You've asked for it, and SS Profile 2019 makes it available. Automatic destruction of internal slugs. Just set up the minimum and maximum length and width, and slugs falling within this range are automatically destructed. SS Profile 2019 introduces an updated program information dialog that provides access to the sheet list previously only accessible through the SS Nest interface. This provides access to standard sheets, including sheet remnants, for interactive nesting without having to launch the SS Nest software module. Are there times when you've needed to crop off the end of a sheet and had to draw in a line and manually punch it? SS Punch 2019 automates this process with a new automatic sheet cropping feature. You can crop any edges of the sheet during the auto punching process or the auto sheet crop command can be run separately to apply crop cuts to an existing punched layout. We realize that as your parts and layouts get more complex, that seeing the location of shaker tabs or micro joints gets more challenging. SS Punch 2019 introduces the display tab markers feature to quickly see the location of all tabs. Support for trapezoid tools has been expanded in SS Punch 2019. Trapezoid tools can now be used for automatic and interactive punching operation just as any other standard tool type. 
SS Punch 2019 introduces an updated program information dialog that provides access to the sheet list previously only accessible through the SSNest interface. This provides access to standard sheets, including sheet remnants, for interactive nesting without having to launch the SSNest software module. Nests can now be calculated using several new sheet resizing options. Layouts can be analyzed to determine if there is a more optimum standard sheet size available. Or sheets can be resized to the minimum X length necessary to support the parts on a layout, the minimum Y length to support the parts on a layout, or the minimum X and Y length or bounds necessary to support the parts on a layout. So why might you want to adjust the sheet size? Well, one reason is that if you're cutting your material off of a coil, it provides you with the optimum cut length for each layout. Additionally, as demonstrated in this video, you now have the ability to nest large parts of similar size that are to be produced from pre-sheared blanks. The material utilization achieved in a nest is largely dictated by the mix and quantity of available parts. Without a higher quantity of smaller parts, it is not unusual to see the material utilization decline the further you get into the nest job. There are numerous techniques for avoiding this situation, and SS Nest 2019 introduces a new one. Filler parts can now be added at the individual layout level after a nest job has been calculated. This allows you to improve your yield on individual layouts without impacting the overall nest job. A new feature for SSNS 2019 is a visual notification of engineering changes. Here we see a standard nest kit in the Nest Wizard dialog. I'll close the Nest Wizard dialog, open Part Share, and check out a part for modification. After a quick edit, we'll check the part back in, updating the original instance of the part. I'll return to Nest Wizard, and we see that the nest kit, subjob, and individual layouts impacted by the part change are now highlighted, letting all Striker users know that the nest kit is no longer current and must be recalculated. Let's say you've used PartShare to extract an assembly from SolidWorks, Autodesk Inventor, or Solid Edge, and now you've had engineering changes to a couple of those parts in the assembly. In earlier versions of PartShare, there wasn't an easy way to update select parts within an assembly. Instead, the entire assembly had to be re-extracted to include any part changes. Now, with release 2019, when you perform a check-in operation to update an existing assembly, you have the option of selecting which parts need to be updated. Only those parts are updated while the rest of the parts in the assembly remain as they were. As you know, the PartShare library not only allows you to maintain parts, but also provides the ability to maintain multiple instances of a part with punch tooling or a toolpath applied. This allows for tooling consistency in future nesting operations with this part. But what about engineering changes? Many of our customers assign a new revision level, but others prefer to just overwrite and update the part in PartShare. If this is you, a new visual engineering change notification system makes it much easier for Striker users to see that an engineering change may have impacted the tooled instance of a part. For example, let's assume that one of the notches on this part is changed. So from our 3D software, we'll use the check-in procedure to update this part in PartShare. Since we are overwriting the part, I'll provide a reason why the part is being updated. Now we move to the Striker CAD CAM software, and we see that the tooled instance of this part has been highlighted in yellow. This lets all Striker Systems users know that this part has changed. To see what has changed, you can simply right-click on the part and select Advanced Properties. Here we can see who made the part change, when it was changed, and what was changed. So now we update the tooled instance of the part. We simply insert the updated part, retool it, and check it in over our previously tooled part and we can see that the tooled instance of the part is now in sync with the updated instance of the flat part. The Where Used feature in previous versions of PartShare was limited and more difficult to locate in the menu. The new updated Where Used feature is readily available in the right-click menu. If a part has been used in a nest, it displays every nest job, sub-job, and individual layout that includes the selected part. 
Corchair has had the ability to batch import DXF and DWG files for many years. Release 2019 takes this ability a step further with an all-new import queue. The purpose of this queue is to allow you to validate parts during import and build import maps to isolate part geometry in busy drawings. Just open the DXF or DWG files that you would like added to the queue. You then have the option of selecting these parts one at a time for import, or they can be batch processed. All part data is available to be set during import. In this case, the part is from a new customer who has delivered DXF files containing dimensional data and drawing borders along with the part geometry. So I'll select the Geometry tab where I can quickly build a map or style to isolate the part geometry. Since I anticipate all these customer drawings will be the same, I'll assign a name to this import style and set it as my default. When I select OK, the part is imported into my part share library. And now that I've built an import style for this customer's parts, I'll select and batch import all of the parts using the import style that I just created.